Hi, and welcome to the NetElastic BNG Manager demo. This demo is in two parts. Uh, we'll cover part one today, which is the operations capabilities of the BNG Manager. Be sure to check out part two, which will cover the configuration menu and the capabilities there. So the BNG Manager is uh, a network management tool that's all web-based to complement the CLI and NetConf uh, APIs that you can use directly to the router. It's similar to a EMS or element management tool by uh, you know common with other vendors, but we do a lot more. It's going to collect operational telemetry from all of the virtual BNGs in your network. You'll be able to analyze traffic patterns, uh, uh, subscriber counts by type, and a, a lot more. It's also going to give you some uh, troubleshooting tools uh, that can be very helpful to your support staff who you may not want logging into CLI tools directly on the routers. And lastly, it offers uh, REST API capabilities uh, to help you integrate and automate uh, further within your management uh, um, environment. Our customers love this tool. Every single customer of ours uses it and uh, gets a lot of value out of it. Um, we have it uh, included currently with every virtual BNG uh, solution that we deploy, so it does not add any additional cost. So let's take a look. We're going to log in to our lab environment. We've got a BNG manager running, and we've got a small BNG connected to it. Let's take a look. Uh, here on the uh, main login screen, we can see a list of devices uh, that are being that are currently connected to the BNG Manager. In this situation, we have one from our lab uh, that's connected. You can add others uh, right here with the plus sign, and you can even group them into a cluster of BNGs for larger scale or an HA pair for redundancy. If we uh, click on that first BNG, we can see the operation summary. You can see some uh, you know, high-level information about the licensing version, uh, management IP, uh, over on the left-hand side, resource utilization, and even the individual processes that are running. And over on your left, uh, subscriber counts by type, and then your uh, default, or default VRF uh, network routes that are connected. Uh, staying within the operations summary, we can go to the interfaces tab, and see a summary of all of the access uh, VLANs that are coming in uh, in a combined accumulated uh, traffic flow. Here in our lab, we just have a, a small amount of traffic, but you can uh, see how we can show and, and display traffic uh, live over the last couple of days, uh, even 30 day and uh, over a year. You can also uh, see all of the interfaces that are connected to the network and drill down uh, further if you want to um, see additional detail about that particular interface. Moving over to the subscriber tab, uh, this gives a similar trended view of your uh, subscriber counts by type uh, over time, uh, both uh, live and up to a year. And then you can also see some of the configuration domain uh, template uh, information. So you uh, uh, can see how that is configured for your network. On the routing tab, we can inspect uh, all the routes that are connected. Uh, we could have uh, multiple VRFs. In this case, we just have a, a couple of routes uh, statically defined. And uh, if it was a longer list, you can also uh, search by network or IP address. If you're using our built-in CGNet, uh, you can um, see the current status, how many sessions are being utilized. You know, we support up to 4 million, and you can even search for a particular user within the NAT table to see uh, what they're looking at. Of course, it's all logged uh, as well. And then lastly, on the operation summary is the uh, resource utilization of the host environment itself. Now let's take a look at the operations access page and here again we've got uh, multiple tabs uh, the access stats from a uh, uh, IP pool utilization uh, your IPOE authentication stats and uh, that's all we have today we also support PPPOE uh, L2TP and a number of other 
uh, connection methods. The subscriber tab allows us to look at actual subscribers on the network uh, by type, and we can also search by username, uh, MAC address, many other uh, types of fields. In this case, we have one IPOE test user uh, connected to the BNG, so we're going to search for IPOE users, and there we see the um, that one user within uh, uh, connected to the BNG. Here's the MAC address of that user, the IP address that they've been assigned. I'm actually going to copy that. And uh, what is the domain template of that user? Now, we also have the ability to inspect the user's configuration. So we can see all of the different attributes that have been uh, applied to that user by uh, either RADIUS or local authentication. We can see right here which profile they have uh, been given for QoS and uh, rate and uh, their current uh, traffic. The next tab, uh, oh, actually before I leave that, um, within this, each of the subscriber lines, there's also uh, a number of actions that you can take. Uh, one is to disconnect that user. Another would to ping uh, the user themselves. And uh, the last one is a favorite star, which allows you to put that particular subscriber on our watch list. And when the subscriber is on the watch list, the BNG manager will accumulate detailed statistics about that subscriber's um, network utilization, which can be quite helpful uh, during a troubleshooting uh, session. So here, this particular user has been added to a watch uh, for a while, and uh, we can see that uh, you know some of the details about the traffic from that user, uh, additional. Uh, detail that's also available on the other screen and then uh, had that uh, subscriber had any network traffic we would see that displayed here on this chart moving to the DACP tab uh, is basically your DACP table and we can search for any of the uh, subscribers to check the status of their uh, DHCP assignment so here Looking up that same user, we can see their uh, MAC address, the IP address that they've been assigned, and when their DHCP lease is set to expire or renew. And we can see the current state is, is currently bound. So that's the operations access uh, menu. Uh, the next one's the operations network menu. And within here, we can see all of our uh, different route uh, routing setups for uh, whether it's OSPF, ISIS, or BGP, and um, any of the routes that we have set up. Uh, in this in our lab version, we just have a handful of static routes, but in the larger network, you would see a lot more information there. Uh, and then lastly is our event page, uh, and here we've got the ability within the BNG Manager to uh, monitor for critical events and issue notifications uh, as you, um, you know, uh, would like. Uh, those notifications can be by SMS, text, or by email, or both. Uh, certain critical events, such as like an interface goes down, uh, all of your BNG uh, or all of your subscriber count drops to zero, those are things you probably want to know about in order to go inspect. There's uh, lots of other um, types of rules that can be established, and uh, this can be a great uh, addition to any other monitoring tools you may have in your network. Uh, of course, uh, there's a log also. Um, you can see when we kicked off the subscriber, it dropped to zero, came back, uh, and uh, dropped some interfaces, brought them back, those all get logged. So that's the operations menu. Uh, a lot of information available to uh, help with the operations of the uh, BNG itself. Now we'll look at the tools menu. Tools menu allows us to enter the debug console. We have ping, trace route, and a packet capture option. Let's start with the debug console. First, uh, we support a user trace function, and you can do that by uh, filtering on different types of uh, access. Uh, methods. And you can also filter that by specific interfaces, VLAN, uh, even individual uh, subscribers, uh, really anything to uh, reduce the amount of uh, debug traffic uh, and uh, focus on 
what you are specifically looking at for. Here we're going to go ahead and start a user trace uh, on IPOE traffic so we can see some of the uh, DHCP renewal information. I'm going to open the console and turn the debug monitor on. And almost immediately you see some of the traffic uh, exchanges at the protocol level for a DHCP renewal. And uh, you can uh, use this as helpful uh, tool for troubleshooting. And uh, this works the same for really any type of traffic uh, that you are looking to uh, gain uh, more uh, detailed debug information, whether it's PPPoE, uh, checking your, your VLANs, uh, IPoE, any, any of your uh, user trace methods. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the debug monitor off and close the terminal and I'll uh, conclude this uh, user trace debug session. Uh, the other functions on the tools menu include ping and trace route, which are uh, very common, uh, as well as uh, packet capture. Packet capture can also be very helpful in a debug process. Uh, we also support filtering uh, the types of packets that you want to capture uh, by um, interfaces, uh, certain types of VLANs, uh, all the way down to individual subscriber levels uh, to allow you to, to really focus on the type of packets uh, you want and not generate too large of a file. We also support uh, user level packet capture, which can be helpful for lawful intercept compliance. On the system menu, uh, we can support configuration backup, so you can back up the entire BNG configuration directly to your laptop uh, right here in the backup now, and it'll save it as a file. You can later upload and restore uh, that, uh, that file, and then uh, you also have the ability to create automated backups of your configuration. Oh, many um, network operators do this as a you know, best practice to make sure that all of the critical routers in their network have uh, automatic saving of their uh, current configurations, and we can support that uh, to an FTP server. And you can see what the you can set the interval, uh, enable it, set which uh, FTP server, uh, etc. So moving uh, lastly to our admin menu, this is where you can create additional users. Now we do have role-based um, uh, user access. Uh, I'm currently logged into the as an admin, so I have the configure menu, which we'll cover in a, in a later video. If I was logged in as just a support or operator role, uh, I would not have access to the configuration menu, but I would have access to all the operations and troubleshooting tools that would be helpful for a support organization uh, trying to support customers. Uh, we also have uh, some other settings such as polling time. Uh, of course, uh, we support a dark mode for those that prefer that. And for further automation, uh, our BNG manager exposes REST API. And we have uh, full documentation of all of the REST APIs uh, available um, to make it uh, easy to extend the functionality even beyond uh, what we've already done. So like I mentioned, uh, we do have uh, the ability to configure uh, within the BNG. We're going to cover uh, this menu in a later video. So I hope this was helpful, give you a view of uh, the power of our BNG manager as well as the BNG itself. Thanks so much. Thank you.